everybody, this is Alchemist 2 back again, and I'm doing a review of the latest version of The Tale of Genji, which is only 11 episodes. But I got this from eBay, thinking that it would be a really wonderful series, and to be honest with you, it really is. The, the animation that is used in this series is absolutely resplendent. It is so sumptuous and beautiful and just every frame you see is just a work of art and the back of the, the cover of the DVD says that this is uh, I think the 75th anniversary of, of uh, Genji's Tale which I thought was interesting I didn't know that nobody really knows where the story came from it's sort of like with uh, with Beowulf, nobody really knows where that tale came from, but it's um, it's a tale that's been told from generation to generation to generation, and that oral tradition still continues. So I enjoyed it for that sake because I enjoy a good story, to be honest with you. But Genji's tale is just um, it's heartrending. It it really is. Um, granted. Hikaru Genji was uh, quite the Casanova. <laughs> he was the darling of everybody. Well, the, the men in the court were jealous of him because of his womanizing ways. And the women wanted to willingly sacrifice themselves for him. But he had real loves with within the whole series um, it made me cry quite a few times uh, especially the the ending song the end theme song I don't know what it is about that that ending theme but it just really cuts you to the heart it's it's very sad and melancholy and it's a, it's just a lonely song and I think it sums up the tragedy of, of Hikaru quite well. Um, there are no filler episodes, which I appreciate. It's they don't go into silly expressions. It's you know they they stay on topic and everything is um, serious and treated as the subject matter should be treated. Um, I really don't have any qualms with this anime. I mean, even the the ending. Uh, so it's sad. It's it's a tragedy, and and that's basically what it's all about. Just just the whole idea of the um, kind of pathetic nature of uh, of Genji's existence after he asked the Emperor at the end to basically exile him so he can repent from his sins. It's, it's so... It's just depressing. But to be honest with you, I, I really enjoyed it because I fell in love with the tale of Genji when I first saw it. I have, I have the original uh, anime, which is kind of slow in parts but really quite a work of art. I think everybody who is interested in the oral tradition of Japan should at least take a look at it and um, enjoy it for the whole sake of, uh, you know, the, the time period it was set in and how historically accurate it actually is because it's very historically accurate. Um, I really don't have any nitpicks with this particular series. I just, I thought it was really well done. The only thing that I thought was kind of uh, a nag to me, kind of irritating, was the fact that um, they really didn't subtitle this series too terribly well, but you could convey meaning out of what the subtitles were trying to say. I mean, they were kind of uh, grammatically incorrect and some things were misspelled but it didn't really matter because you could tell what was happening through the the actions of the characters and 
the the interactions that were occurring and I just thought it was uh, a really fabulous story you had um, the worlds uh, between the courts and the courts really didn't get along you had uh, Genji's son and then there was uh, another emperor who didn't necessarily care for for Genji that much and I guess they had sort of a rivalry I I don't really know I, I think so I think that's how I can interpret that but it just was really um, heartfelt I thought and just um, sad but if you really want to see something that's different and historically accurate it might yeah it might be a little bit slow in, in places but it's extremely beautiful and enjoyable and the music will just take your breath away and the animation too and I wouldn't recommend this for uh, younger children because uh, there's a uh, quite a bit of sex involved <laughs> Well, they, they don't really show, they, it's shown in a very artistic, um, beautiful way, even though some of the relationships that ha occur are very awkward and just make you think, ugh. <laughs> and on the other hand, if you're a romantic like myself, you're, you're really not so bothered by, I was, to be honest, I was actually disturbed by, um, by some of the relationships that, that Genji had, but uh, a part of me wanted him to be happy in the end, and everybody he ever loved left him in some way, shape, or form, and it's it's a uh, it's very sad. It really is. It, but it's just it's there's truth in that. There's a lot of truth in that. And that's the way life is sometimes. It's just that's straightforward. But I think that there can be joy that's taken from uh, life as well. And you can see the, the beauty around you. And I think that's what um, this tale is actually trying to tell us. So I give uh, Genji's tale, the new one that's 11 chapters, I give it four stars just because. I think it's the most accurate version, despite the fact that the the beginning theme song is sort of weird. I mean, it's got a nice rock beat. I think it's Puffy that Puffy Amiyumi that does uh, the theme song. Which I love Puffy Amiyumi. Don't get me wrong, but I I think that they should have chosen a more um, accurate. Uh, genre to depict the whole series like what they did for the end the end theme dear lord in heaven is just so heart tugging I, the first time I heard that ending theme I thought my heart was going to break I really did I, I just I'd never heard something that beautiful and sorrowful before this broke me in part just thinking about it makes me want to cry but um, I highly recommend it if, if you're a a fan of the original tale of Genji, then I would definitely take a look at this because it's well worth your time. So, two thumbs. Way up!